Hi everyone, I'm Mirko Caravanelli from Mila, Montreal, and in this video I will present our ICASP 2020 paper on multitask self-supervised learning for robust speech recognition. This paper uh, that represents um, another step towards more robust self-supervised learning is co-authored with, with Jenny Wang Zong, Santi Pasquale, Pavel Svitoyansky, Joao Monteiro, Jan Tremal, and Joshua Bencho, and started uh, during the JSALT 2019 workshop organized by the Johns Hopkins University. Okay, but why we need self-supervised learning? Uh, the current dominant approach in deep learning is still supervised learning with large annotated corpora. But data annotation is expensive, time-consuming, and requires humans in the loop. So, a natural alternative is to combine standard supervised learning with self-supervised learning, where the supervision is extracted from the signal itself. Typically, in self-supervised learning, we apply some kind of known transformation or sampling strategies to the input data and we use the resulting outcomes as targets. In practice, the target, we still have labels in self-supervised learning, but the labels are obtained for free without humans in the loop. The main issue is that despite the efforts done in the last years, uh, self-supervised learning on speech is really, really challenging. Speech, in fact, is a very complex signal characterized by high dimensionality and huge variability due to speakers, uh, accent, language, environmental conditions, recording, the tabs, and many, many other uh, variabilities. Well, to improve current self-supervised learning techniques, we recently suggested uh, to learn speech representation by jointly tackling multiple self-supervised tasks. The intuition is that each self-supervised task may bring a different view of the input signals and if we put together different views of the same signals we may have a better chance to learn a more um, robust and general representation. And we came out with this idea called problem agnostic speech encoder that we um, we presented at Interspeech 2019. In practice, PACE is based on an encoder, which is a neural network that converts and transforms raw input samples into a higher level representation. We then have a bunch of workers that solves different self-supervised tasks. More precisely, we have regression tasks where we learn some, some kind of known speech transformations such as MFCC, prosody features, LPS, etc., with the idea of injecting some kind of prior knowledge on our encoder. But we also have binary task where the goal is to learn high level features by maximizing the mutual information with different sampling strategies. And of course, you can I read more about that in our original paper. In PACE, typically two phases are involved. Step number one is the self-supervised training, in which the encoder and the self-supervised workers are jointly trained by optimizing a loss, which is computing as the average of each worker cost. So here we are not using any supervised label, but only self-supervised label. Then there is a second step, which is about supervised learning. Uh, in this case, the PACE encoder is pre-trained with the parameters found in the step number one, in the supervised, uh, self-supervised learning phase. And we train a classifier on the top of that, that solves a certain downstream task, such as speech recognition, for instance. Here, uh, two modalities are possible. One is to freeze the PACE encoder during the supervised um, fine-tuning phase, and the other is to fine-tune together both the supervised classifier and our PACE encoder. Well, 
space gave us very promising performance in speech recognition, speaker recognition, and even emotion recognition. And we thus continued working on that. And in this paper, we present PACE Plus, which is an evolution of PACE. Uh, in particular, we focus our improvement uh, in different parts of the system. First of all, we have developed an on the fly data contamination that, as we will see later, is very, very important. Then we have focus on developing a better encoder and finally to derive a better set of workers. Okay, on the fly speech contamination. Here, instead of feeding the encoder directly with a clean signal as we did in PACE, we feed um, our encoder with the contaminated speech which is generated on the fly. Uh, we does add some kind of disturbances uh, with a certain probability. One is reverberation, which is performed by using by, by performing a convolution with a large set of impulse responses. Then we have additive noise. In this case, we are using the free sound and the dual data sets. We then have frequency masking and temporal masking, masking which uh, are similar to what is done in spec argument paper, but here we implement everything in the time domain. And then we also have clipping, which introduces a random saturation into the signal. And finally, we also have the possibility to have sometimes signals characterized by overlap speech. Okay, what are the benefits of that? To quantify them, uh, we employ the following system. We train our PACE Plus encoder with 50 hours of libre speech, and then we use uh, the phoneme recognition of TIMIT as our supervised downstream task. Here we are using the standard HML DNN system where our, um, our phoneme classifier is a very small MLP. Um, in this way we are able to, to simulate the condition in which we have a lot of data for self-supervised uh, learning but just a little amount of labeled data for uh, the supervised parts. As you can see from the table, the speech distortion modules provides a remarkable improvement. This happens in the timid reverberation and noise case, but it happens also in the timid clean case. This is less uh, obvious and it might mean that the introduction of um, noise, contamination, reverberation, etc., or the introduction of these distortions um, have a kind of regularization effect on our representation. Furthermore, we improve the performance by revising our encoder. In particular, we introduce skip connection. Skip connections has the benefit of introducing some gradient shortcuts into the architecture that may help against vanishing gradient issues. Uh, and another benefit of skip connection is that the final representation is the sum of basically intermediate representations and so our downstream task can choose which level of representation is more suitable for um, the classification problem addressed. Moreover, we have introduced on the top of the PACE features quasi-RNN. Uh, Quasi-RNN are based on multiplicative gates, uh, based on convolutional uh, neural networks and a minimalistic recurrent pooling function. And with this, we are able to learn long-term dependencies efficiently, 16 times faster than LSTM. So PACE encoder is also extremely efficient and fast. Well, as you can see from uh, row 3 and 4 of this table, the introduction of the new encoder with quasi-RNN and skip connection helps, and in particular, it helps in the context of noise and reverberation. Probably this is due to the fact that this task is much more challenging, and having a better encoder helps, especially in this uh, very challenging situation. Finally, we put some efforts to improve the set of workers. Um, first of all, in PACE Plus we have more workers than in PACE, 12 for PACE Plus and only 7 for PACE, 
and in general what you have noticed is that with more worker we basically improve the robustness of our representation and that happened even though uh, the task uh, the workers are solving self-supervised tasks which are uh, apparently correlated like MFCC or filter banks estimations. Moreover, our workers are not are now estimating not just a single feature but um, features with their first and second derivatives within a context window of seven consecutive frames. So this way we force our encoder uh, to learn uh, to embed uh, larger local contexts. Very important uh, aspect is that the targets for the worker are extracted from the clean signals, so before contaminating them. And this is an important aspect because in this way we implicitly force Space Plus to denoise and learn more robust features. So what's the benefit of that? As you can see from the last row of the table, uh, we have a major, uh, really a remarkable improvement with the new set of workers. And this means that it's very, very important uh, having a high number of workers and training the workers with clean label. And uh, this is uh, the last row correspond to the system that we finally called PACE Plus. Okay, but how our PACE features compare against standard speech features? On the left, you can find some results using DIRA. DIRA is a noisy and reverberated corpus based on Wall Street Journal sentences. And in Table 3, you can find some order rate performance using standard features such as MFCC, filter banks, gamma and combinations of these standard features. PACE Plus supervised is the performance obtained when we are just uh, uh, training the encoder and the classifier end to end without any kind of self-supervised pre-training. The last two rows instead correspond to the proposed system. PACE Plus frozen is the situation in which PACE is, is used as a standard feature extractor, so we pre-train the encoder with the self-supervised parameters and we keep them frozen during the supervised training. And as, as you can see here, uh, this modality significantly outperforms all the other features and also combinations of other features. One advantage of PACE is that our features are computed using a neural network and we can back propagate through our neural network. In other words, what we can do is to um, pre-train the encoder with the self-supervised weights and uh, um, fine-tune it during the supervised, cl the supervised classification as well. And as you can see, this gives also a bit of improvement over the frozen version. On the right, you can see the results that we have achieved on Chai 5. Chai 5 in an, is an extremely challenging task, which is are characterized by noise, reverberation, um, conversational speech, overall speech, and many other disturbances. And from the table 4 you can see that even in this very challenging scenario we have some performance improvement over uh, standard MFCC baseline. And this happens uh, also when we concatenate uh, I vectors into these representations. And I think this result is particularly important because it means that uh, we are able to generalize quite well, know that the conditions, uh, the challenging conditions that we see uh, under CHIME 5 are very, very difficult, very, very different from the conditions that we have seen during training. So this um, is a good result in terms of transferability, uh, mainly on, of our features. To summarize, PACE Plus is a self-supervised learning system able to learn a robust speech representations. Uh, the code and the pre-trained model are available on uh, GitHub. Uh, this PACE Plus and other self-supervised learning techniques will be implemented within 
the speech brain project i encourage you to take a look into the website if you would like to hear more about that and finally um self-supervised learning in audio speech will be object of an icml 2020 workshop that i'm organizing and i highly encourage you to take a look into the website if you are interested into this topic that's all let me thank my collaborators one more time and you for your attention